Good morning, wonderful people. Welcome to my channel, Rahu and Ketu Study Part 16. We are on a personal note first. So, what are we doing when we are saying we are studying Rahu and Ketu? We are studying the strongest desire, hidden motivations, desires, propensities, inclinations, subconscious desires. On the one hand, which is Rahu, strongest desire. And on the other side, we are talking about Ketu, which is the strongest sense of taking things for granted, taking things for, well, taking things for granted. And um, detachment from the opposite end of that axis. So we are talking about axis, aren't we, when we are talking about Rahu and Ketu. So that's, that's what we are essentially talking about. And this plays out pretty prominently on every creature, every human being that has ever been born. Even avatars of Vishnu had to go through the nakshatras, okay? And even had to go through their own Rahus and Ketus. Every guru, every billionaire, every beggar, every child, every man, woman and child born on this earth has to go through these nakshatras, has to go through this Rahu and Ketu. It's just a way, let's just put it simply as this is the system we are working with. And now we are trying to understand the system. Now we are trying to unpack whatever is there for us to grow and learn from, to be the best we can. We are all trying to be the best we can. That's the good thing about human beings. We always try to help one another, the good side of human beings. So in this channel, I bring all these parts so that you can unravel your own chart, study what is there first. Okay, so now we are in Rahu, which is placed in Hasta Nakshatra, and Ketu, which goes swings in the four padas of Hasta Nakshatra between Revati and Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra. So let's see what that pada wise it brings. But off the bat, just off the cuff of the bat, what is Hasta Nakshatra? Okay, let's see. So what is Hasta Nakshatra? Just to recap. You can see the 27 nakshatra playlist if you're so keen. Hasta nakshatra themes are getting rid of negativity in the personality. Now you stick in Rahu in here and it tries to do that in a very unconventional way. Okay, Everything about Rahu is unconventional, out of the box. They use all their shrewdness. The human factor of cunning and being shrewd comes in Rahu and Ketu. Knowledge, attaining success through work, through hands. Hasta means hands, okay? Hand skills. They're very fortunate. Their creativity is very high. They work hard and they are dexterous. Think of the sixth house because this falls in Virgo. Depositor is Mercury, the most exalted form of Mercury. Think Mercury here. Everything to do with intelligence, hard work, dexterous, perceptive, art through hands. They are very artsy people, good with hands. They can become a sculptor, a cartoonist, a painter. They can be of service. They can be very intelligent, good with finances. They are very clever. They want action. They are very action-oriented people. Quick, it's Devgana and ruled by the sun. So they are very quick with things. They are very clever. Sun gives that ability. The deity is Savitur. Wants action, great humor, great speakers. These are these guys in Rahu, if you stick in Hasta, can make good comedians. All the stand-up comedians that you see, they could come with Hasta in Rahu because they want to humor people. They're very witty, humorous people. They're great speakers, communicators, authors, and writers. Again, everything to do with hands. Think about hands and think about even communication. The life lesson is to become inspired and alert in order to bring gifts to fruition. These are the themes of Nakshatra. Now you place in the unconventional guy called Rahu in here. And Mr. Rahu wants everything which is not of mainstream, which is non-conventional, which is out of the box, doing it in a different way, developing a unique style. Rahu wants to experience everything in a unique style. Not what's already out there, but I want to do something of my own. This is Rahu. If ABC are doing it this way, comedians, for example, because Hasta has got a theme of being a comedian, I want to do it a different style of comedy. You see so many styles of comedy coming up these days, and that's Hasta Nakshatra. They make very good comedians. Some of the famous comedians have very strong Hasta Nakshatra in them. So let's see what it does from the four padas. Okay. First, we will cover the introduction and of what is Rahu and Ketu, and later on to the padas. So let's see what it, get into the study. 
So number one, the classical characteristics of Rahu and Ketu as described by the classical Vedic literature. Okay, what is Rahu and Ketu? These are the north and the south nodes of the moon formed by the virtual points which are the intersection points between orbit of the moon around the earth and orbit of the earth around the sun. So basically if you take two eclipses, ellipses, it will form two intersection points. Yeah. So these two intersection points are called the north node and the south node. They are virtual nodes although they behave like planets and we shall see why in a minute. So who is Rahu? The symbols are there like a horseshoe and the reverse horseshoe. right? This is typically how it is portrayed in Western astrology. So I'm using the same symbol here. Rahu is mythologically depicted as the severed head of a demon, symbolizing constant, endless, insatiable hunger and appetite, be it sensual or physical. Yet it is unable to hold on to or grasp it. Rahu is the one who constantly wants something. Think of it as a live head only, not the body. Okay. So it can't hold on to anything or be satisfied even if it gets that thing since it has no arms or body or stomach, right? just a head which is alive. This gives Rahu the title of Bhoga Karaka or meaning one who is after sensory materialistic pursuits. So think any earth sign for example, they want sensory materialistic pursuits or think any of the signs literally whatever they are after, Rahu wants that and wants that very badly and goes after it with everything. This is an energy in us by the way. It is not a planet. It's a virtual node but it will behave like a planet which we shall see why. So it is unable to satisfy that hunger or hold on to anything even though it gets something. It wants to move on to the next and then to the next and then to the next. This is why Varahu is also called as the guy who wants foreign things not of the native land or not of what the person is natively born in. Why? Because of that insatiable hunger. There's always insatiable hunger to go after one thing after the another without being able to hold on to it. That's Rahu. Ketu, on the other hand, is mythologically depicted as the severe body, the remaining half of the demon, symbolizing constant, endless, insatiable search for identity. It is looking for the head, but it doesn't have a head. So it is looking for that identity. Everybody's identity, ego is centered in the head, what you look like. right? It is also seeking for true purpose, sense of self. As a result of this, it tries to hold and grab on to everything that it can find its hands on because it has got hands. Ketu has got hands. It's trying to hold on to everything, but it releases immediately because it knows that's not the head. It's like trying to grasp onto everything, thinking, oh, I want this, or I am this, I am that, I am this. Not getting any identity because it's not finding the head there. Since it has arms and walks everywhere, it goes around through life, walking from place to place, people, situation, circumstances, but not knowing who or what it is. It doesn't have a head. This is why Ketu is referred to as Mokshakaraka or the seeker's path, the one energy in us which seeks something. That's why Ketu is called the Moksha Karaka. Now this is the classical interpretation. Okay. Now we shall see how this plays out in the modern interpretation. Very important to connect the bridges. Now here you have the Rahu Ketu general characteristics as modern interpretation. This I have borrowed from the book uh, Light on Life by Robert Sowell. Excellent book. I have put it in the community tab if you want to go through it or purchase it and read it. I seriously suggest that. Okay. The North Node of the Moon, Rahu. What does it become because of the characteristics which classically is told in the texts? What does Rahu lead to in the modern context? Rahu is responsible for originality, individuality, independence, insight, ingenuity, inspiration and imagination on the positive side. Because Rahu and Ketu both love to explore foreign stuff, things out of the box, things not taught by tradition, Rahu and Ketu will be anything but traditional. Okay. Think of it as something foreign to the culture, to the way you are taught things. Looking for original stuff. If there is one singular force that is responsible for creating everything that we keep modernizing, so to speak, thinking out of the box, it is this. That's why it's important to pay attention to this. Okay, back to this. So Rahu on the downside becomes leads to confusion, escapism, neurosis, psychosis, deception, 
addiction, vagueness, illusion and delusion. This is the downside. Now how this plays out and why we will have to see individually in the charts. We shall, we shall see that. Okay, Ketu. Ketu, the guy with only the body, no head there, is gives us the feeling of universality, impressionability, idealism, intuition, compassion, spirituality, self-sacrifice, subtleness on the positive side. On the downside, it can lead to eccentricity, fanaticism, explosiveness, violence, unconventionality, amorality, iconoclasm, impulsiveness and emotional tensions. This is on the downside. This is what it plays out and Rahu Ketu is typically an axis like it is shown over there, right? Rahu Ketu, let me remove myself for the time being from that axis, okay? There you are. So you see it as an axis, okay? 180 degrees apart and it can play out in any one of the opposite houses. It can play out in 1, 7, 2, 8, 3, 9, 4, 10, etc, etc. We will see that later. But this axis becomes a definition point of where in your life, in your different houses, are you looking for these two aspects and they are always opposite to each other as you can see. Okay, to stand opposite to each other. So if it plays out in second house, it detaches itself from the eighth house. If Rahu is in second house, it, Ketu will be in the eighth house. You see what I mean? And so you will bring the eighth house aspect with these aspects shown here. Second house with that aspect shown over there. Of course, it plays out with something called as dispositors. We shall see that next. Now, if you go to a traditional Vedic astrology, they will go on and on endlessly about dispositors. What the hell is a dispositor? It's an invented term by the Vedic astrologers. It has no meaning of its own. It shows the disposition. And what's the story on this? Rahu and Ketu both are enemies of the sun and the moon. This is the basic principle. So it has the solar aspect and the lunar aspect. The solar aspect is called the dispositor. And the lunar aspect is the nakshatra. Which gives the entire characteristics and the ball game of Rahu and Ketu. Okay. The solar or the dispositor means since Rahu and Ketu are enemies with the sun and do not have a full identity of their own. Remember, it's a virtual node. It is not a planet. They both do not have any planetary characteristic individually. So they take on the identity or the disposition of the lord of the zodiac sign that they sit in and borrow the attributes of the house from which that lord sits in. Suppose Mercury is in the third house. Okay. And Rahu sits in the house of Mercury somewhere else. So it will borrow the attributes of Mercury sitting in that third house and bring it to that particular house wherever Rahu is sitting in. Got it? Nakshatras. Since Rahu and Ketu are enemies with the moon and do not have a full identity of their own, Individually, they take on the shade of personality. Nakshatra is essentially a shade of personality. It's coloring of a personality. It's seeing the world through different colored glasses. That they sit in and borrow the nakshatra traits and attributes which color their propensities. So Rahu and Ketu do two things at the same time. At the solar level, it goes with the dispositor. That is all of the planets, physical planets. Mercury, Mars, Venus, Sun, Moon, so on. So they take on the attributes of whichever house they are sitting. If it sits in Rahu sits in Cancer, it will you have to look for where Moon is sitting, which house, and what it is doing there, and even the Moon Nakshatra. If it is sitting in Leo, Rahu in Leo, that means it you have to look for where Sun is sitting and which Nakshatra and which house. So it will bring those attributes. That's the way you have to analyze this. Okay. Let's see some aspects of which house they play in and why. Now there are some vital aspects that you keep, need to keep in mind when evaluating Rahu and Ketu because this is important for, especially for people who are sort of looking for self-development to understand where they are coming from. If you are not interested in changing yourself, this entire channel is useless for you. But if the other one who is interested in knowing what is happening in my life, where do I need to go, what are my talents and you question these kinds of things, excuse the noise somebody is drilling about. So, then you need to understand these aspects. Now that's the typical chart, Indian chart. And house numbers are depicted as 1, 2, 3, 4 up till 12. 
ಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ರಾಹು ಕೇತು ಆಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲಿಬ್ರಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಬಾಟಮ್ ಸೊ ಐದರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಹೌಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ರಾಹು ಕೇತು ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆನ್ ನಾವು ಒನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆನ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಅಸ್ಟ್ರಾಲಜಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ವೆರಿ ವೈಟಲ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನಲ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ಹೂ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ಹೌ ಯು ಆಪರೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಕ್ರೂಷಿಯಲ್ ವೈ ದ ಒನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ರಾಹು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೇತು ಫಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಹೌ ಯು ರಿಲೇಟ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಯು ರಿಲೇಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಯು ಆಸ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೌಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೌಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಯು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಯು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಅ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಹು ಕೇತು the four ten on the other hand fourth house being the house of the mother tenth being father fourth being home tenth being career you see this has a you know all kinds of implications which define who you are the four ten axis has effects on the heart versus mind mind wants to, is the one who goes out there in the world and being used in the career right you dissipate your energy as the mind in the external world heart is your home your home center where you feel comfortable home is where the heart is that kind of a thing so heart and home is affected by this rahu ketu axis again rahu and ketu might be reversed rahu might be in the fourth ketu might be in the tenth or vice versa same way with one and seven but these are the vital relating aspects of rahu and ketu now what about the rest of the houses now rest of the houses are called trikona or kona in sanskrit right these are the things that come and go in your life the let be second house third house fifth house sixth eighth ninth 11th and 12th these are the things that come and go in our life through life through your entire life these are things that are added into subtracted from us but this is not us 147 and 10 is us everything else is secondary which revolves around you as life comes and goes all other axes depict what attachments and detachments we have towards different areas of our life that's all it is they are less significant in terms of rahu and ketu when compared to 174 and 10 axis of rahu and ketu please remember this when you're evaluating you just have more propensity towards one part of life and less towards others rahu is attachment ketu is detachment rahu is expansion ketu is reduction and they stand opposite to each other all this right now let's take the cases one by one right so in the first pada as you can see in the screen over here rahu we are stuck in hasta nakshatra in the fourth pada of hasta we are doing in the reverse direction because rahu and ketu move opposite to other planets now it is in virgo so basically rahu is in virgo as you can see here and ketu over there is in revati nakshatra right so the fourth pada of rahu if you stick in in hasta nakshatra ruled by virgo as the zodiac sign is positive mercury follow my thinking here and then ketu you have put in second pada as you can see over there second pada in revati now revati in second pada in navamsha goes into capricorn which is very grounded so you are talking about cancer and capricorn axis in navamsha we not so we are talking about the the push and pull energy between emotional satisfaction liberation of emotional desires your whatever your deep emotional desire is in this lifetime versus the other axis which is all about material success virgo is material success it's an earth sign right and both are dual signs keep that again in mind you have to keep the energy of the zodiac itself both pisces and virgo are dual signs what do you mean by dual signs they are caught up in duality everything they are always in two minds should i do this or should i do that should i do this should i do that both pisces and virgo so rahu and ketu find themselves here they will become very dualistic they are always constantly switching between two minds rahu and ketu you must understand tend to amplify and shrink things more than necessary and here ketu is following the dispositor which is jupiter wherever that sitting in your chart in whichever house 
and whether that Jupiter nakshatra is suitable for this or not. Sometimes it can get contradictory. You see, that gets very complicated. That will become like a five-year series of videos, right? I am just giving the basics here. On the other hand, Rahu, which is sitting in Virgo, also is dualistic, but it is very, very materialistic. Rahu is a materialistic energy. So in Virgo, it does very well. It wants the good stuff. Rahu wants the good stuff. He wants fame. He wants success. He wants. He will use his power of shrewdness, cunning. These people can become very cunning, know how to achieve stuff, very smart, they are intelligent. That's what Rahu Ketu brings here. And in the Capricorn Cancer axis, it brings in more of tussle between heart and mind. Capricorn Cancer axis is about heart and mind. There's an ant walking on my cable, I'm just watching that. Okay, let's see Pada 3 now. So now we move on to Pada 3. Energy is pretty much the same as I spoke earlier. We are talking about Jupiter and Mercury here, the teacher and the student, because Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Mercury is ruled by Virgo is ruled by Mercury. But this is a little different to Gemini and Sagittarius. There it's a real teacher and student. Here it is the axis Pisces and Virgo. What can we speak about Pisces and Virgo? Well, it's more about emotional liberation at work versus emotional liberation in general. Pisces is like the ocean. It dissolves in the ocean. It loses its identity. Virgo wants to find that identity. See, you can interpret this in many, many different ways. So now we are talking about Sagittarius and Gemini axis in Navamsha. Let me point that out to you with my mouse. There you go. Dharma, Pisces going into Sagittarius for Ketu. So Ketu, this positive will become Jupiter. In Navamsha and Rahu dispositor will become Mercury. This is the student teacher access. Now, these kind of people, they have the wisdom because Ketu is dispositor is Jupiter, they have bring wisdom from the past lives and they have to now get it into the world in a grounded fashion, Virgo Gemini combination. And Rahu does very well in that. So, these people might even become teachers of some kind. These people might become comedians also of some kind. Okay, that will be, I think, more in the Aquarius part. So let's examine the third one, the second pada. So in the second pada of Hasta, if you place Rahu, that's that axis over there. You can see the arrow. I'm pointing to the arrow there. Going from Moksha in and Scorpio in Navamsha to Taurus. So we are talking about the Taurus Scorpio axis. So now you are transiting from a dual sign to a fixed sign in Navamsha and so is here. So these people have got a funny personality change through life, this axis. That's Ketu and this is Rahu. So these people might be very wishy-washy, you know, not they might seem like this person, this boy or girl never seems to make up her mind about anything. She's always like, ah, I'm in two minds, I, shall I do this, shall I do that, da, da, da. But suddenly, after 36 years, they might become very fixed and like, now I know what I want to do in life and they might go after it and succeed in it. This is the flip of personality type. If it goes from dual sign to a fixed sign, it's a very powerful flip. They have finally made up their decision. Taurus, Rahu in Taurus does very well because Taurus is materialistic. They might go after, let's say, buying real estate or becoming successful in terms of whatever profession they are doing, like engineers, doctors, etc. I want to go and do that. Hasta can also become a good doctor depending upon where Mars is placed, right? Because it's skill of the hands, surgeons. Surgeons need skill of the hands, successful surgeons. So later on in life, they might become driven this Rahu and also intense people emotionally speaking so that's what happens in second pada now let's see the first one right in the first pada we see now it has gone to Uttara Bhadra pada what's your change it has gone to in Pisces it has switched to Nakshatra so now we are talking about the Kama and Dharma axis, which is this, this yellow arrow over here, the Kama, the desire going into Dharma. So in uh, Navamsha, it becomes, dispositor becomes Venus. So change of Jupiter to Venus as dispositor, that's a huge change. Both are good. 
in that sense so wisdom earlier on in life ketu being dispositor they'll have a lot of they'll be very wise people during first 36 years then they will switch over and they will want to do something with arts and music libra venus the dispositor so they bring both these energies and now going into rahu it goes into aries so they might become initiators of something aries is always initiators of something right and what are the themes of uttra bhadrapada uttra bhadrapada if you remember they want emotional satisfaction they are searching for meaning emotional meaning in their life this is uttra bhadrapada what makes sense to me emotionally not head they are not very heady people they are very heartsy people and so this axis this position of ketu you see over there in uttra bhadrapada will bring about this even in the next one which will see uttra falguni also it will come across so in a very and being uttra bhadrapada it's a very manushya gana so they want to feel this emotion physically in real terms as a human being we are not talking about spirituality here we are talking about daily people okay so that's what this particular axis will bring hasta it's a very grounded nakshatra because it's in virgo rahu here does generally very well because rahu is about producing physical results and it will use all its mind and power and hasta's energy to accomplish it hey i'll leave you with this much next one we shall see uttra falguni now uttra falguni will also probably transit through uttra bhadrapada as well as purva bhadrapada that should be interesting let's see that next one